a man who believes with no doubt that we can build a new American dream economy driven by innovation and creativity, by education and, yes, by cooperation. And by the way, after last night, I want a man who had the good sense to marry Michelle Obama. It was back to the 90s last night at the Democratic Convention in Charlotte. Uh, Bill Clinton's center stage, and he seemed to love every minute of it. And to help us break down the significance and some of the specifics of President Clinton's speech, I'm joined by our panelists tonight, of course, Dominic Carter, political journalist and author, and Marcella Berland, a political strategist and, re and president of Latin Insights. Uh, welcome, and thanks for joining us. Thank you, Andrew. First of all, your takes on President Clinton last night. I mean, everybody seems to have raves for him. Do you, uh, do you agree? I think it was a very effective uh, speech and he accomplished what he wanted to accomplish, which was to demonstrate that the, we are better off today than four, year, four years ago, which is what the Republicans were saying against uh, President Obama. So I think it was very effective. Very effective. Uh, I agree with you. Um, the, the fact of the matter is, as, as we've been saying, as you said at the top of the show, Andrew, polling shows this race is oh so tight. And any one thing can decide the outcome of this election. So for the average person at home, you, they say to themselves, well, I hear President Obama saying this. I hear Mr. Romney saying that. But now the last president, when times were good for the country, is saying, hey, Obama's your guy. Here's why. Here's why they're fibbing to you. And here's why you should stick with him. It may be the deciding factor. When you look at the economy, and that's working against President Obama, it might be the deciding factor for why those crucial independents may decide at the end of the day to go with President Obama. President Clinton always remembered as a guy who could sell you know, snowplows to the Saudis, that sort of thing. Uh, so I want to break down some of the individual arguments that he made and get your reactions to it. First, uh, he, he sort of set the, the difference or tried to establish the difference between the Democratic worldview and the Republican worldview. Uh, take a look at, at this. We Democrats, we think the country works better with a strong middle class, with real opportunities for poor folks to work their way into it, with a relentless focus on the future, with business and government actually working together to promote growth and broadly shared prosperity. You see, we believe that we're all in this together is a far better philosophy than you're on your own. Is that a line that's going to move the needles, you think? Well, I think it's an important point because people are really fed up and tired of all this fighting that really doesn't allow legislation to move. So what he's saying is something that actually President Obama didn't accomplish is the need to work together. When uh, Obama was a candidate, he promised that if he reached the White House, he was going to work together with the Republicans. But we've seen that that hasn't happened. And also he made an appeal to the middle class, which is very important because it's a segment that has been squeezed and he needs the vote of that segment. And, and I thought, Dom, this, the, that sort of explains the underpinnings for things like health care reform, where instead of just, you know, whoever has enough to afford it is fine, it's this we're in it together kind of spirit that it really stood in contrast to the Republicans last week. And especially now, at this point in time for the country, we have Americans that are watching us at this very moment that have received foreclosure notices and frankly are waiting for the sheriff to come and evict them. And the longer we are seeing that throughout the counties in the five states that we air in, where sheriffs are saying, I'm not going to evict people. I'm going to take a year and a half before I enforce this court order, court order. And so what President Clinton is saying is, listen, we believe in that safety net. That safety net must exist. So you have Republicans saying less government and Bill Clinton saying that safety net must always be there. Clinton made a couple of points last night that if, if, if President Obama can convince voters to take this side of it, I think he wins the election. The first one about repairing damage in the economy. President Obama started with a much weaker economy than I did. Listen to me now. No president. No president, not me, not any of my predecessors, no one could have fully repaired all the damage that he found in just four years. 
that's not an argument that President Obama can make on his own. I mean, that's you think that's the kind of thing that's going that to you're, you're going to hear throughout the the rest of the election. Yes, uh, and and it's a message that President Obama needs surrogates to make, especially one who happens to be the former president of the United States. The fact of the matter is he inherited the Titanic. I think most reasonable people will conclude that. But most reasonable people also say, I'm tired of hearing the excuses. All I know is I'm going under, and what is the government doing to help me? So when Republicans, and they've done a very good job, Andrew, of demonizing uh, Mr. Obama, when it comes to the economy, in terms of making it seem like, you know, hey, this is his fault. Never mind that we didn't cooperate with him. Never mind the obstructionists. This is all his fault. And so you need someone like a Bill Clinton to counter that argument. Marcella, can President Obama rely on Bill Clinton from now until the end of the campaign, or does it begin to look problematic for the, for the, the current president if he's looking... At a, at a past president for help all the way through? Well, I think he needs as much help as he can get. And if Bill Clinton can be there helping, as we've seen in the convention, is something positive. But also, you have to understand that voters are not uh, stupid. Once, you know, all these confetti and the balloons are gone, people are going to start thinking, well, what is my situation? Like Dominique said, you know, I'm losing my house. I don't have a job. My salary went down. So. He had an opportunity, Obama, to make some change. The expectations, as you recall, were extremely high, and mm -hmm. I think many people are disappointed. Now the issue is, moving forward, who is a better option? Do I continue with this guy, even though he hasn't done such a great job, or do I go with the Republicans, which I'm not sure what they're going to do? Speaking of moving forward, that's exactly what we have to do on RFL. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we hear from Sandra Fluck, the woman who became the face of controversy over birth control when Rush Limbaugh called her, well, let's just say some not so nice terms earlier this year. Her defense of President Obama, one of the more memorable ones of last night. We'll get to what she said next. Stay with us. Democrats must win the election. Never in my lifetime has the divide been so deep and strong and different. The parties are oceans apart.